To me, Igor is Tyler the Creator's best album. It is also somehow the most different and mainstream unorthodox, and yet best received by critics all at once. I'm feeling a decent to a strong 9 on this thing. Where Flower Boy felt like a familiar Tyler, displaying more sides to him, conveying hidden feelings and his capacity to make a grand concept album, Igor succeeds where Flower Boy falls short. Igor is more than an album, it's an experience and a hero's journey. It follows a three-act story structure with protagonist, side characters, reoccurring musical motifs, and much more. In my opinion, it is closer to a musical than it is to a rap album, as even Tyler said, don't expect a rap album, despite its win at the Grammys for that very category. I don't know how you could call it any one genre with a range as wide as this. Dracula, Dracula, Dracula. Tyler first gave us a taste of Igor's world with this, a surreal image of many Tylers holding still set to a rough, gravelly tone in an untitled video that abruptly cuts off, only to be retitled later, something he did with several other song visuals pre-album release. It went on to become the title track Igor's theme. In movies, often their original score, or original music, features character themes that occur when important character thematic events take place. Take Ray's theme from Star Wars as an example. Igor is the story of toxic infatuation, not love or a crush, but rather the gross hooks that sinks their way into our brain when we feel we need someone, even if it is illogical or bringing our own demise, like a drug. This is captured perfectly in the second taste of the album pre-release, the album covers. A dark, disheveled underbelly look of Tyler in noir black and white undertoned by a lush pink from the past. The color scheme and tone juxtaposition would go on to be the perfect summary for the sound of the album, which is filled with the deep, gravelly sound of Igor's theme on every track, undertoned by beautiful, lush sound reminiscent of the 80s, a time where romance and unrequited love ballads were famously common. Tyler gave notice minutes before the album's release that the best way to hear Igor for the first time is with full attention, no pausing, and no skipping. He said if you wish to ride a bike, go for a walk, or listen with friends, he encourages you to do so, as it is an album he wants you to hear in a happy place. He instructed to expect nothing, as it is unequivocally not any of his past albums, but rather a special experiment that he hopes we like. And even in the post-album release interviews, he was seemingly very surprised that we liked it as much as we did. He just wanted us to listen with an open mind and an open ear, and appreciate the details, knowing how different it would be. With all of this setting the tone of what to expect before listening, it was clear this would be an album as raw and from the heart as the protagonist on the cover. Igor's theme paints a picture of someone riding around feeling that way, illustrating a man who is swept away with feeling. A perfect segue into Earthquake, a song literally about being so shook to the core by another person that they make their entire world shake. In the next track, I Think, Igor confirms that our suspicions we have are true. These feelings are indeed about love, and this time, it's for real. Emblematic of the feelings one may have when they can't help but think that their feelings towards a new person are larger than any love or crush that they've had before, even if you haven't known them for that long. It starts with a raw, roughly mixed drum pattern that makes me picture Igor stumbling to find his footing and figure out what has happened to him after he has had his earthquake. Akin to a poem in a novel, setting the tone, Gerard Carmichael in our first interlude then suggests that life is about giving things you want, everything you can, set to beautiful piano, a motif used in the lighter parts of the album. Similar to words of encouragement one gives themselves to decide that their feelings are correct and worth exploring. A feeling all too familiar in adolescence, when you feel you only have a certain window of time to convince someone who you're crazy about that they're the one for you. Not wanting to be forgotten or friend-zoned, Igor must have them to be complete. After a short history together and possibly some toxic behavior from Igor's clearly intense and volatile nature, he pleads, please don't go, it's my fault. Accepting that it's his fault the relationship is in a bad place, but not accepting that it should be over. Igor plays the card of Desperate Lover. He is willing to throw himself under the bus, pleading, it's my fault, 
for the sake of preserving this arrangement. And it is here we must ask, is it Igor's fault, or is he an unreliable narrator? Is he trying to play victim and gaslight his lover into staying, or is he gaslighting himself to stay with an abuser who is trying to leave him for his own betterment? This is all speculative and we will never have a firm answer, but the exploration of what happens when we make ourselves into a martyr for the sake of what we deem to be love can be powerful as it defines what we value in ourselves and our relationships. Our narrator, Gerard Carmichael, reminds us like a mid-novel stanza break that sometimes you need to close a door to open a window, meaning that sometimes closing a door on a possibility you will likely never have is what you need to do to escape the burning building that you're currently in. Igor does not take the window yet, leaving the door open to plead one last time in. On this very song, New Magic Wand, he pleads, please don't leave me over and over, until it is the next song, A Boy is a Gun, where he is similarly pleading, don't shoot me down. This is the first time he shows some self-awareness knowing that a boy is a gun, and they have the ability to shoot him down romantically, but also mentally, and this may be his final chance for sanity. Puppet. Igor is past admitting blame and is now putting his soul on the line, proclaiming that whatever their wish is, it can be granted. He can be the lover they most desire, sacrificing his own dignity and life if needed. This is akin to an infatuated person deciding that their crush is so crucial to their soul being complete that they would rather change their soul altogether than find a new way to fulfill it. Accompanied by a nostalgic-like wind of Kanye West's voice giving us incoherent murmurings of finally catching a breath and lighting up some weed, Igor starts to finally come back to reality, as this can only go on so long. Drod the narrator tells us, but at some point, you come to your senses. In What's Good, Igor rides the track in the most hip-hop style of the entire album, seemingly tearing down everything around him he thought was real, from Rudolph to even claiming it's hard to believe in God when there's no miracles around. The hard-hitting beats which shift and thump around are emblematic of the psychological change that Igor's monster is undergoing no longer under his lover's spell. This track feels as though he needs to exert this energy to prove to himself that he's back. As he raps in the hook, I see the light, I see the light. I don't know what's harder, letting go or just being okay with it. In Gone Gone slash Thank You, Tyler takes a more appreciative approach to moving on, singing gleefully, My love's gone. A sad fact stated with artificial joy, like when you force a smile onto your face hoping that it eventually turns into a real one, claiming, at least I had it, instead of never. As to reconcile with this partner not being the one, only to be followed by the thank you outro, thanking the partner for all the love and all the joy they allowed him to feel. Having looked himself in the mirror finally admitting to himself the damage he has done, Igor needs to convince his brain that this is all wrong villainizing the lover, proclaiming, I don't love you anymore, with a hostile tone. The album crescendos with one last volatile crush of Igor's toxic nature, clearly not fully ready to move on, screaming, can we still be friends? Something an ex may ask with the subconscious hope that it will one day lead to something more again. Because if you can still be friends, who's to say one day you won't be compatible the way you used to be? This album may be a masterpiece, turning the clearly, partially real and raw feelings of a recently outed bisexual young man into a grand ballad of heartache and toxic thinking that all of us are partially familiar with, one way or the other. Whether it is Igor's theme present on every track, or the arrangements that perfectly go from one song into the next, Tyler has made more than an album. He made a story. A story where the music's featured musicians are not obtrusive or overly drawn attention to, but rather are featured players, interwoven into the DNA of the music, akin to actors in a play or members of a band all contributing to one common goal, in this case being the music, the story, and most importantly, the feeling. While some may critique Igor to be immature with its lyricism and subject matter, I find those very listeners to be the most immature of all, as they are not able to realize that sometimes art is conceptual and not literal, and sometimes we all have thoughts as dark and toxic as the album cover to Igor looks, even if we do not act on them. And for Tyler to sprawl out these corrosive feelings as they happen to him in real time, in the form of this lush, raw album, I think that is a gift. 
as it is better to expunge himself of these feelings in the form of song where others can reflect than it would be for him to be Igor in real life. This was Zane Barry from Tall Skeleton. Have a nice night.